for great wrestling from the Olympic. We'll be back in our first match right after this. Welcome wrestling fans to great wrestling from the Olympic and what a treat we have for you now. Cage matches, the matches inside a steel 15 foot high cage. This is my kind of wrestling, I like this. And look at this, we're, we're looking uh, at wrestlers in a cage like monkeys in a zoo. Look at Mondo Guerrero who's climbing all over that cage. And Professor Ito says, I want no part of this. I'm getting out of here. It's Mondo Guerrero and Professor Ito. And Ito says, no, I no like this. I, I never wrestle in cage. And Mondo yanks him down off that big 15-foot high steel cage and sends that forearm into him. Arm whip. There's a slap and a club to the face, but now it's Mondo coming back. And as you notice, Mondo's got a, a cast on his arm. He was injured just a short time ago in a match. Has to wear that cast, but he can wrestle with it. As long, of course, as he does not use it as a weapon. No way, Randy, no way. Choking by the Professor Ito of Yokohama, Japan. Good takedown, and now... Uh, Ito in control. The object of a cage, of course, is to keep outsiders out and insiders in, and there's no interference that way. And of course, one of the good things about a cage is that when you pin your man, you can climb the top of the cage and go over and out to the floor below, and that's the winner, whoever does that first. Question is, who will it be? Will it be Mondo Guerrero or will it be Professor Ito? Both men really cautious. You know, a cage match can be dangerous too. If you get whipped into the ropes, you can hit those steel bars and uh, badly injure yourself. There's no question about that. Cage wrestling on great wrestling from the Olympic. This is the only place you'll ever see matches this kind. Incredible. Wrist lock into a hammer lock. Front hammer lock by, uh, rear hammer lock rather, by Mondo Guerrero. Goes back to the wrist lock. Inside hock trip. You can go backwards or forwards with this move, believe it or not. Most wrestlers tend to force back. Guerrero has. Guerrero now tries to set him up for a pin. One, count of one. Now using his weight again. Oh, Mondo using his hair going in there for the pin for count of two. Professor Ito, you know, this is a man that uh, likes to bleach his hair. One week you'll see him in the blonde, the next week you'll see him in the dark hair. He was the first wrestler to go to Japan after he came to the United States in the early 60s, and then go back to Japan with blonde hair. It was very unusual to see a Japanese wrestler with blonde hair. It made him extremely, extremely unpopular back there. And uh, he built quite a reputation with blonde hair. Professor Ito. Body scissors by Mondo Guerrero. It's a good, well, well-styled wrestling move, the body scissors, body leg scissors. And of course, Ito uh, can do a number of things to try to secure release. Mondo, of course, has control of him. Look at that, just rolls him over, sets him up for that schoolboy. It's called a schoolboy press. Guerrero. Guerrero 
shoulders as you can see running that. And if Guerra lays that way too long, then he gets counted. As you can see, Dugan was right there to count his shoulders. That has happened before in wrestling matches here. A man will forget to be laying back there like that and get his shoulders counted, and then he loses the match. It's incredible, but it does happen. And we have a good surfboard there inside, using the head as a leverage. Look at this! Look at a complete turnabout by Mondo Guerrero. He tried to secure a... Uh, small package on that, but he couldn't do it. Very agile. You know, even though Mondo Guerrero does not have the size, he has the speed and ability. And there's a good hot trick by the uh, Professor Ito. Takes Mondo Guerrero down. Now he has a camel clutch on him, a version of the cam camel clutch. Um, he's got the chin locked around. It's... Guerrero now stands up. Gets to his feet, tries for a snap there, but taken down at the trunks. Mondo Guerrero, look at this. Now he's caught in a uh, nerve pressure hold by Professor Ito of Japan. Ito a tough competitor, there's no question about it. Mondo Guerrero coming back, you know, he knows the style of Ito. Now, oh, look, Mondo's starting to climb. Look at this, look, 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 look at Mondo going up over that cage. Look at this, he really is flexing it. And Ito's going up after him. We, we've got two wrestlers climbing all over the cage. Ito falls. Oh, Mondo Guerrero can really scale that cage. I'm really surprised. Forearm smash by Mondo Guerrero. It's like monkeys in a cage. That's why I was laughing. It's, uh, this is a highly unusual match to uh, see on television. You usually uh, don't see it, but again, we present the very, very best wrestling for you on wrestling from the Olympics. Ito now going to work, throwing Mondo not into the ropes, but into the steel cage itself. Head first, look at that. That's a way to really hurt a man. And of course, Ito is not above doing just that. Throwing that inside karate chop to the side face of Mondo Guerrero. Ito starts to scale the cage, and now Ito says, I go, I leave, I go out of here quick. Once Ito gets over the top of that cage and gets down the other side to the floor below, he wins. Mondo hustles up that cage, gets up there to the top. Those men are fighting about 15 feet high up there. Now Ito decides, I don't want to go up there. I'm, no, he's going to go up again. And now Mondo's got his trunks and yanks him down to the mat. Mondo now stomping away at the Professor Ito, and the fans are going wild. They want to see someone going up and over. Clubbing away at the Professor. This really isn't a wrestling match. This is kind of a war between these two. Mondo Guerrero, Professor Ito battling it out. Snap mare to the mat by Mondo Guerrero. Now into a front face lock. Pressure is on the rubber chin. It is on the chin. But he's got that cast in there, and that's no pleasure to be caught in a cement like or plaster of Paris kind of cast. Going to work, torquing that head and neck. Now Ito saying, look, look, cast, hurt, hurt, pain, me, pain. Once again, Mondo Guerrero now makes his home in Huntington Park, California. He's done several uh, movie and stunt uh, assignments for the movie studios. Because he's so agile and because of his size, he's done a lot of stunt work in recent years. And he's not wrestling, but he told me uh, earlier, he said, my love is wrestling, it's my life. It's all I know and uh, I love doing it. He does it very well, there's no question about that. Mondo Guerrero out of a fine wrestling family dumps Professor Ito right on his face. Now sets him up for a version of the camel clutch, which is actually a backbreaker. Ito trying to lift Mondo and trying to get to his feet. And of course, Mondo being as light as he is, Ito can do just that. Ito ramming him back first into that corner. 
buckle and Mondo couldn't get out of the way in time. Now there's that karate kick right to the chest and midsection of Mondo Guerrero sends him down. That's a lethal weapon on his feet because uh, Professor Ito is a martial arts expert. Now chokes him between the bars and the ropes and pushes him in there with his feet. That's dangerous. Ito doesn't care. Figures he, look at that, right in between those ropes. Fine camera work by our pro wrestling cameraman. Look at that. You can almost see down his throat. Mondo Guerrero now in trouble by the professor, the dastardly professor Ito of Yokohama, Japan. Apon. Guerrero now trying to shake the cobwebs. There's the referee outside the ring. In a cage match, the referee does not go in the cage. He stays uh, outside and uh, they just take it back. Red Shoes Dugan is in the ring and this is a match probably where there are two referees to make sure there's no outside interference. The outside referee making sure that there's nobody to help Ito or Mondo Guerrero. While Dugan, of course, inside the ring is making sure that things don't get too out of hand. But there have been matches in a cage where there's no referee. There's those karate kicks. You know, they, they can do a lot of damage. Ito knows just where to place those kicks and where it hurts. And as you can see, Mondo is groggy from it. Mondo trying to make a rally back by throwing those solid punches to the middle and chest of Ito, and I think it's doing its job. It's taking its toll. Ito feeling the effects. Hits the deck and goes down quickly. Now into the hair goes Mondo Guerrero. Throws him to the mat head first. Mondo Guerrero now knee diving in the throat and chest of Ito for one. Only a count of one. Once you make your pin, once you pin the man, you can go over uh, the top of the cage to the floor below. That's one of the rules. The other rule is if, uh, if you can get out of the cage and get over the first, you can uh, win the match as well. Ooh, there's that karate thrust. Karate. Open hand thrust to the throat. Mondo Guerrero has felt the sting of the Oriental Spike. Ito again with those well-placed karate kicks. Judo chops to the side of the face, whips him into the ropes, hits the cage. Mondo ducks under and over and comes back with a right hand that ducks the professor. There's another right that chops to the throat. Ito now being clubbed away by Mondo Guerrero. Mondo uses the cage, starts to go up and over, but Ito grabs his leg and Mondo rolls him up in a schoolboy for one. Only a count of one, but now Mondo continues to go over the top of the cage. Mondo gets up and over and Ito's kicked back down. Mondo jumps down and he's the winner. Mondo Guerrero is your winner. Look at this. Mondo gets back. Now he's going back into the cage. This is a competitor of the highest magnet. Believe me, he is excellent. The winner of the cage match, 15 feet high in the air, Armando Guerrero. Let me tell you something. He has shown his skill and ability. He kicks Ito down and stays on top of that cage. Incredible. Look at this young wrestler. Ito's complaining, I win, Banzai. But that's not the case. The winner, Mondo Guerrero. Oh, Mondo's got that steel glove off that pole. We've had pole matches, and Mondo's got that steel glove. He's testing it out. He, he looks like he just might decide to use it, too. In fact, I think he's going to. That's not part of the match, folks. This is, uh, this is extra, let me tell you. Let's try to stay with this as long as we can. I want to see what Mondo Guerrero does with that glove. There's uh, lead and steel in there. Oh, Ito knows that. And he's he's taking off. We'll be back. Another steel cage match. First man to be presented. 
The great Indian coming down the aisle weighing in at 243, former World Stag Team Champion. Two and a half points he has in the Beat the Champ Elimination Tournament. Let's welcome in Chief Running Hill. And in this Beat the Champ Elimination bout, his opponent, one half of the world's championship tag team, the America's title holder. He has three big points to the Beat the Champ Elimination Tournament, the Spoiler Star. This is our second big cage match on great wrestling from the old Olympic. And I'll tell you, the first one was wild, but this should be wilder. Now, I do know for a fact that rugged Ron Starr has a phobia. And his phobia is he does not like heights. He does not like to climb anything. He does not like to be on tall buildings. He won't even step on a uh, two-tier step ladder. That's his bad phobia, and he doesn't know what he's going to do or how he's going to get over this cage. And he's trying to tell his opponent, Indian Chief Running Hill, now wait a minute, I don't want to climb any cage, I can't get over a cage, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the Chief says, that's not my worry. That's how we win the match, and if i got to win it, I'm going to do it. Tomahawk Chop catches Star, and Star goes down. Now the Indian goes to work. Good deal to the center of the mat by Indian Chief Running Hill. And Hill comes after Starr. Starr meets him with a knee to the middle and a club to the back. Again, it's Ron Starr. Starr punching away to the side of the face of the Indian Chief. Clubbing away. Tries to set him up for a front deal. Let's see if he can do it. He can't do it. Chief powers him into the corner. Indian Chief Running Hill now in control. He's got a wrist lock on him, and Star now feeling the effect. Star, as you can see, is very concerned. He's like, I don't want to climb any cage. I can't do it. Throws the Chief into the ropes, and a good body tackle sends Star down. There's a reverse hip toss, sends Star to the mat. Arm drag takedown by Indian Chief Running Hill. Now of Pahuska, Oklahoma. In case you've just joined us on Great Wrestling from the Olympic, it's cage time. All the matches in a 15-foot high steel cage. As far as I know, no other wrestling program has ever presented an all-cage car. And that's just what we're doing. Into the hair for release goes rugged Ron Starr, the spoiler. Knee lift by Starr, club to the back, another club and blow to the back as Starr tries to fight his way out of the corner. Punches to the midsection. Rips away at the face and the eyes of the Indian Chief running hill. Chief Running Hill, by the way, is still going to school in wrestling, and studying in various Indian languages. That's his uh, major. Covered by Star for one, only a count of one. Forearm smash that sends the Chief to the mat. Oh, there's a fist and nobody there. Now it's to the Chief's advantage. Stopping those fingers. Oh, I felt that all the way here. Going to work on those injured fingers is the Indian Chief. Chief knows if he injures those fingers or drains the blood from the fingers and Star's not going to be able to even climb out of the ring. And right now, I don't think Star really wants to think about that uh, now or any other time. He keeps looking around at the cage and how high it is. And, and, uh, I think it's really worrying him. Here's that arm bar off the shoulder. It's a devastating little move. Reversal, and there's a headbutt by Star. Star is known for his hard headedness. There's that glove off the uh, steel pole that's alongside of the cage. And I'll tell you something uh, a wrestler uh, in these kind of matches can go after that uh, glove and use it as a weapon if uh, he can climb up that cage. Steel, uh, those pole matches with the steel lined gloves. Very dangerous matches. The 
we've seen them before and we'll be seeing them again on Big Wrestling from the Olympics. Highly dangerous and unusual pole matches. Headlock by Ron Starr. Question is in to the Indian. Does not give up. Secures a release with a top wrist lock. Taken down by the hand. Now going to work with his fingers inside the mouth of the chief. Now that's not the rest of the place. It just is not necessary. But Starr feels that it is. That's the kind of man this Ron Starr goes. Oh, biting. Oh, look at that. Highly un, un orthodox move, biting a wrestler. Coming back now, the Indian Chief doing his war dance, going into it, his victory war dance. There's a tomahawk chop to the throat, a tomahawk chop to the head. Now a beal to the center of the mat. The Chief now in complete control. The Chief whips out Star into that opposite corner, decks him in there. Now the Chief comes in with another fist, another tomahawk chop to the top of the head. Star, now wait a minute, Star going into his trunks for some object. I saw it. He went into his trunks, he's got something in his right hand, trying to cover it up from the referee. Star, oh, uses that object or whatever it is. He puts it back in his trunks. The Chief is down. Star now applying a claw hold to the head of the Chief, who's already injured by some object that, that Ron Star had in his trunks. The claw is on the Chief, and the Chief is down, and Star applying the claw. Well, you might as well count to 100, because that's what the referee can do. Now Star figures he's got enough time. He doesn't know. See, he, he's scared. He's worried. He, he's afraid to get up off that mat. It's that, that height phobia. Look, look at him hold on for dear life. Can you imagine? Look, his eyes closed. He doesn't want to look down. He doesn't want to look up. He's going up over the cage. He's doing it. Now he looks down. He sees what's down there. He's holding on. He's petrified, fans. Here's a wrestler. I have never, ever seen this. He is scared stiff to climb that cage. He will not do it. And that is the only way he can... Wait a minute. There's his tag team partner outside the ring. The hood who says, come on! You can win. Get down here. He says, I can't do it. I can't do it. He says, I'll come up and get you. And there's the hood. He says, come on. All you got to do is climb down. What's the matter with you? He says, I can't. He says, I can't. I'm scared. I can't do it. And the hood grabbing him by the hair to take him down. I've never seen this, fans. I have never seen anyone who was afraid. afraid to, he's afraid to let go. He's afraid to move. The hood says, look, I'll help you. Let me help you. And Star says, no, no, don't, 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 don't. He says, I'm scared. I don't want to go down. In the meantime, Chief Running Yell is feeling the effects of that foreign object and, and the claw hole trying to come to. The hood knocks him, saying, hey, I'm going to knock you down. In the meantime, Star falls the wrong way. This is almost uh, a comedy of errors between the hood and, and the rock Star. Star now grabs him by the trunks. He says, look, just hang on. He says, I'll help you down. I'm right here. Oh, look at this. Look at... Oh, no, no, no. Star is petrified. He will not go down. It was one thing to go up, but it's another thing to come down. The hood says, look, look, come on, come on. Just do what I tell you. I'll get you down. Take one step at a time. Star, petrified in climbing that ring. I have never seen it. must have been taking them five minutes to get down, down off the ring. Now Star holds on to the cage. He's still, and he wins. Ron Star wins the match. It's incredible. But wait a minute. Star loses the match. The winner is the Indian Chief because he had help in getting out of the cage by the hood. The winner, Indian Chief Running Hill. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. inside of the big steel cage. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you from Houston of 205 pounds, the very popular cowboy Tom Pritchard. He's just now climbing in the ring with him, his teammates, 
who is also a former America's Tag Team Champion. They are the team of the title holders. 214, out of Mexico, Apollo Jalisco climbing into the ring. Already in the ring, the newly crowned America's Tag Team Champions. Weighing 246, the wild bull of the pompous, Pompero Firpo. And at 240 from New York, Dynamite Jack Evans. Here's another good tag team match, and it's inside the 15-foot high steel cage. What a wrestling card we've got for you here. This is a biggie, tag team action inside the steel cage. Anything and everything can happen. Starting off for the team is Cowboy Tom Pritchard and uh, Dynamite Jack Evans. Side headlock by Evans, who is hairless. On to uh, the Cowboy Tom Pritchard, who's got all the hair. Good looking young fellow from Houston, Texas. The team is Dynamite Jack Evans and the Wild Bull of the Pompous Pompero Purple. Oh, yeah. Purple, who is on the outside of the ropes, who you probably see. Good roll up and arm drag down. That's a very good move by this young cowboy Tom Pitcher. Has a taut arm bar onto the uh, dynamite man. Jack Evans, who with his brother Ray Evans, former America's Tag Team Champion combination, the Evans brothers. Tom Pritchard in the ring there with Evans. His partner for this match is Apollo Jalisco out of Mexico City in Mexico. Pritchard, a fine young athlete, good looking, well developed athlete, muscular. Tag off is to Apollo Jalisco now, who continues that arm bar on to Jack Dynamite. Dynamite trying just by sheer weight to uh, get a tag to his partner, Pompero Furpo. Furpo, by the way, you can see. Uh, uh, there he is. Tag off. Furpo's in the ring. Furpo speaks eight languages. Fluent. Very intelligent. But because of his wild, unorthodox wrestling style, he dubbed the Wild Bull of the Hawks. One of his favorite holds is a hold he calls a Garfield, which is a combination of the sleeper and claw hit. These were very, very effective. Oh, into the hair goes purple. You see what I mean? He could have used a good uh, chin lock or head lock, but instead he just went up the hair and ripped the guy and ripped the power of his go away from it. Wild, wild bull of the power. Purple. He was even educated at uh, Oxford in England. Just by his hair, Purple throws away uh, Alisco. There's a headbutt by this wild, wild bull. Pompero Purple has had many battles with many wrestlers, wild matches with the likes of Fred Blassie and uh, the uh, Sheik and several others. Wrestling Bobo Brazil. Very strong wrestling, by the way. Very, very strong. Side headlock by Cowboy Tom Pritchard onto uh, Frippo's partner, Dynamite Evans. Into the ropes goes Cowboy. Back body drop is caught by the uh, Dynamite Man. Pritchard. Uh, Trying to regain his sense of balance. He does it, whips Evans in, now reverses it, and gives a back body drop to the dynamite person, Jack Evans. Tag off by Evans to Garfield, Pompero Purple, the bearded wonder of wrestling. Just by the hair, he throws Pritchard over into the corner. In comes Apollo Jalisco, who is uh, fresh and ready for purple. Let's see what purple, purple is strong. There's no doubt about it. There's a block that knocks purple off his feet. Look how quickly purple gets up. Look. 
Purple down, up, down, up. Boy, this Purple. But Purple doesn't want any part of this young man. Glad. Follow Alisco. And look at these body blocks. Flying body blocks by Alisco. Headlock by Alisco onto Dynamite Evans. The tag off to Pritchard. Pritchard stays in that headlock. Snap mare to the mat. Take down by the hair into a side leg scissors. We've got some wrestling here. Good. Good moves by these four men. They can wrestle. Don't sell them short. Now Pritchard secures a release from that head and leg scissors. Caught in that uh, leg scissors again. And uh, Evans. Now stomp to the chest. Headbutt catches Pritchard off guard. Now Evans into the boot of the wild bull. Purple. Evans again holds him. Purple punches him. Purple sending those punches straight to the face of this young Cowboy Tom Pritchard, this young fella has more fans, and I'll tell you, 90% of them are young ladies. They love this young man. He's a good looking boy, too. They asked Pritchard if uh, there was anybody serious in his life. He said, nope, he likes to play the field. It's a big field, folks, believe me. Now, the wild bull of the Pampas, purple, getting angry. He says, I don't get mad. He says, I get angry. Very well educated, knows uh, something about everything there is. I mean, you can start any kind of a conversation with him about any kind of a topic, and he knows about it. Very well read, and of course, uh, speaking all those languages fluently, as he does eight different languages. Uh, he's, he's respected in the wrestling world. But his ring style has a lot to be desired by his opponents. Going to work with a stomach claw is Wild Man Jack Evans, trying to put that claw onto the belly of Cowboy Tom Pritchard. Now a stomp in the middle. Tag off to Purple. Purple goes to work on the hair. He'll go to work on somebody else's head or hair, but then you, you grab his hair, and he's got a wild mane of hair, like a lion almost. Then he goes bananas, just absolutely goes berserk for some reason. I think he feels that he's like the modern-day uh, Samson, that his strength is in his hair. And uh, he's often said that, too. He says, I know he says, uh, I have a God-given gift, and that's my strength, and it comes from my hair. Well, <laughs> that remains to be seen. Or scientifically explained, for that matter. The press is in. Pritchard's down. Cowboy Tom Pritchard again, caught by the hair. The uh, Red Shoes Dugan has seen it, so he's breaking up purple. Stay out of the hair. Now Pritchard's mad. Pritchard starts to make a comeback, throws that fist in there. Tag off to Jalisco. Now Pritchard and uh, Jalisco, Pritchard, Evans, and Purple in the ring. All four wrestlers in the ring at the same time. This is a tag team match. Flying leg leap. Takes down Furple. Another one by Apollo Jalisco. Very good move into a side leg scissors. Jalisco being warned. Uh, keep the leg up off the throat. Onto the chin. Furpo caught. It's a hard hole to get out of. You can either roll to... Uh, toward the man, a roll like Furpo is doing, away from the man, but I think you're better off rolling toward the man. Furpo now trying to secure release. He does it very nicely. Now stakes out the legs of Jalisco. Jalisco's got to act quickly. He does not. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, he does. A stomp and nobody's there. Good move by Jalisco. Sold the young fella short there. Beal to the mat. Flying leg scissors takes him down. Tag off to Jack Dynamite Evans. An explosive wrestler, this Jack Evans.
side headlock by Cowboy Tom Pritchard. Picked up, dropped, good. Holds on to the side headlock. Taken down, rolled over. Evans tries to pin him. The weight of Pritchard, again, holding that side headlock. He's got the advantage. Now a punch to the middle, trying to secure a release. Clubbing to the back, he does it. Evans now trying to go to work, brings him over to the corner where Furpo is. Furpo, a forearm out, catches him in the throat. Dynamite Jack Evans, a snap more up there, takes him down into the corner, but the tag is made, a flying body block. Here comes another flying body block. This wrestler knows how to, eat. oh, a knee to the back. Stopped him from that third flying body maneuver. There's a backbreaker by Dynamite Jack Evans. Evans tags over to Furpo, says, you finish it up. In comes Furpo, and Furpo now sets him up. Another backbreaker, pins him. One, two, only two. It was only two. The referee says, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's right. There was a pinfall. Now they can go over to the top. Over to the top, and Evans just adds insult to injury and stomps on Jalisco. But now look at this. Pritchard now fighting Evans while Furpo goes over the top of the rope. Jalisco trying to hang on to Furpo. Pritchard now back body drops Evans while Jalisco tries to hold Furpo. And now both wrestlers, Pritchard and Jalisco, have Furpo and start to pull him down back into the ring. The match is still on. Remember, there is not a winner until uh, the wrestlers get over the top of the cage and to the floor below. And we've got all four men in there, all four slugging it out. Oh, double cross blocks and tackles. Again, they're going to do it again, Evans and Purple. Watch out, guys. Wait a minute. Look at this, a monkey flip and a leap, catches him in a small package. The pin is secured by Cowboy Tom Pritchard. Now Pritchard says to Alisco, let's go, come on, we, we're going to win this. Pritchard's out of the cage, he's won his for his half of the team, but in the meantime, Alisco did not have a chance to get out. And it's two on one, both wrestlers join him. Wait a minute, look at this, Cowboy Tom Pritchard's going to go back and save his friend. He's got that steel glove, he knows how to use it. He's been in these kind of matches. He's won more than any wrestler. He goes back in the ring with the steel glove, and he uses it on Furpo. Uses it again. Furpo is down. Now he goes after, and he's going to use it on Evans. Evans says, no, please, no, don't hit me, don't hit me. Now uh, uh, Pritchard goes after, goes out of the cage. Jalisco comes with him. It's Pritchard and Jalisco that are going to win this match. Evans trying to stop him. Furpo feeling the effects of that steel glove by Pritchard, and both Apollo Jalisco and Cowboy Tom Pritchard looks like they have won the match, and they are happy men. Look at that. They are very happy. What's this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The outside referee is telling Cowboy Pritchard something. Oh, wait a minute. No, come on. He says that Cowboy Tom Pritchard and Apollo Elisco are disqualified for using that steel glove. And Pritchard and Elisco are beside themselves. They said, wait a minute, no, that's not fair. And he says, yes, you cannot use that steel glove. You used it, you are disqualified. We'll be back with more wrestling coming up right after this. Whatever you do, don't go away. More action coming up. Here we are, wrestling fans. Back to more action in the ring. This time, it's the masked hood against the whip. The whip. A well-known black wrestler here in the United States. Tremendous athlete. Very fast, very powerful, going against a very experienced masked hood. The match is in progress. Figure four by the whip. Now, haven't missed a thing, fans. We have just started this match. 
both wrestlers have torn into each other. Uh, the whip wants to win. The hood wants to win. It's a really fast-paced bout. The hood now sending a punch to the throat of the whip. Good, good young black wrestler. This fella knows the holes. He knows what to do and when to do it. And, and he loves fans. He's, he's like Walter Johnson. They tag team uh, together on several occasions. Uh, uh, they're buddies outside the ring. And uh, this young fella has a big career ahead of him. But in the meantime, he's got to get past the Hood, who is his number one opponent right now. And the Hood is out to make a big mark in wrestling if he can defeat this young fellow, the Whip, here. Especially inside a cage. This is a dangerous type of a match. And right now, it's the Hood with the advantage over the Whip. All the matches on wrestling from the Olympic have been in a cage. Highly unusual program. The whip clubbing away at the hood. The hood could use a, a whip of his own right now, it looks like. The whip going down tops him for one. Two, well, only one, only one. Look at this, the hood grabs the ropes. If he was a true wrestler, he would not be something like that. I mean, I'm Sportsman. But there's no sportsmanship when it comes to two well-tuned athletes in the center of the ring, ready for combat, wanting to win, because the big money goes to the winner. That's the name of the game for these wrestlers, and of course, the chance of going for the big championships, like the America's Championship and the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. Hood right now looking for a shot at the America's Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. Count of two. And Hood thought he had had it. Very confident, very cocky wrestler. Won't talk much. I mean, he just comes across very arrogant. Doesn't like to give interviews or talk about his personal life or give any clues as to who he may be. Meet of the midsection by the Hood. Picks up the whip, oh, front backbreaker. Count of two, the whip is up. This is a game, young wrestler. He does not want to lose, I don't blame him. He wants to make his mark, especially here in front of all the fans uh, watching on television all over. And the uh, hood gets behind him, uses a chin lock. Very effective maneuver. Although a man probably will not submit from a hold like this, it has been been used effectively several times to win a match. To wear a man down so that uh, a pinfall can be scored. There's a knee to the back kidney area. There's that version of the camel clutch, so to speak. The Hood from Parts Unknown. Against the Whip from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The Hood now with a tight front face lock, chin lock on the Whip. Question is in. Whip goes, nope. Don't give up. Good takedown by the whip. Secures a release, and it's the whip trying to get back some some equilibrium. Right now, it looks like the hood is in complete control, however. Trent Chancellery can pick him up, suplex him. He chooses to do so. Fine suplex. Good move by the hood. The hood looks around, says, see, I can wrestle with the best of them. One, two, only a count of two. Now the whip trying to come back. 
Forces the hood into the corner. Tug tackle. This is something I guess he learned from big number 71, Walter Johnson. There's a third tug tackle, and that seems to have knocked the wind or steam out of the hood a little bit. Whips him, as his name implies, over into that opposite corner turnbuckle. Monkey flip off the corner post. Good move by the whip. Oh, a flying drop kick that missed. Boy, you come down after missing a drop kick, and you know what you've done wrong. The hood turns him over and just lays his weight for one, two. Oh, only a count of two. A couple of fine moves by this young fellow in the whip. But now the hood back in control. There's a fist to the jaw, but the whip comes back. More fists into the belly, into the belly, into the corner. Good beal to the center of the mat. Now there's a drop kick that connected and caught him flush on the side. The hood is down, he's topped, but unfortunately his feet are on the ropes. Into the ropes goes the hood. Back body drop. Ooh, that looked like it took its effect. The one, two, only a count of two. One second away from a win for the whip. Two evenly looking and matched rest. Oh, a clothesline out of nowhere. I don't believe it. That came out of nowhere. Two, three. That had to be a win for the hood. Had to be. Now the hood must climb over the top of the cage and get to the floor below to win. And I doubt seriously. Well, here comes the whip. He's going to try to stop him. The whip going up. Starts to yank him down. There's a punch to the face of the whip. Another punch, and it sends the whip down to the canvas. In the meantime, the hood goes up and over. And not only did he score the pinfall. Oh, wait a minute. The whip's got him in a bear hug. A bear hug, and oh, the hood rips at the face, turns around, and just drops to the floor. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. 